so close. So, so close. Oh, start or not, now. So yesterday was a trip. Made it over Route 80 and Donner Pass. And see why the Donner Party had such a hard time. It's April 17th and it was snowing. Like, really snowing. Fortunately, we weren't on horses and there were road crews. As you can see behind me, there's palm trees. I'm about 89 miles from the Golden Gate Bridge. Planned across it today. Fingers crossed right now. So this was the day Glenn and I were going to finally cross the Golden Gate Bridge. Everything was fine with the car. The exhaust was louder than I wanted, but I could live with it as long as we got there. A short drive down Route 80, jumping off onto Route 37 and onto the 101 and into the Golden Gate National Recreation Area to take in a few viewpoints and then cross the bridge. That would give us a total of 2,905 miles covered. That was the plan until the starter decided to make a nasty sound at the very last viewpoint and the car not firing off right away. Oh, start or not, now. I gave it another try and the car started up. This wasn't a showstopper, but I felt the starter wasn't long for this world. That, however, did not stop us from enjoying this moment. Uh, <laughs> it is the Golden Gate Bridge. And the Maverick is crossing it. Now, this may look like a guy just driving across a bridge to you, but this is a goal that's been unrealized for 18 months or better. So to drive an old Ford all the way across the country, across the Golden Gate Bridge, it's being done right now. And I'm pretty happy about it. Oh. <sighs> Friends in front of me, he's going fine. Everything's good. Now we just got to go all the way back to Harrisburg, but just this moment, right now, it's surreal. Mission accomplished. to the end of the Lincoln Highway. It's terminus point. Everything's just fine right now. So, wow. So this is the end of the Lincoln Highway. Both Glenn and I have made it. We've crossed the bridge successfully. Now all we gotta do is drive 2,800 miles back to Pennsylvania. And yeah, the end of the Lincoln Highway. It's just a nondescript marker beside a bus stop. We leave the terminus of the Lincoln Highway, but we're not quite headed east just yet. First, we venture out onto Route 1 and head south. Glenn had arranged to meet up with Greg and Dave. These are gentlemen he met on the Shelby Daytona Factory 5 forums, and I do miss the days of the internet forums. Greg, his son who was driving the Wicked Mustang, and Dave who was kind enough to back off and let the Mavericks stay with the group, would lead us on to a twisty drive to Alice's Restaurant in Woodside, California for dinner. For those that are thinking about it, no, it is not the Alice's Restaurant from the Arlo Guthrie song, but according to the owners, you can get anything you want at this Alice's Restaurant. We have some great food and even better conversation, and we don't find ourselves back on the road until 6.30 p.m. We only had 159 miles to make our a hotel, but we're on the west side of several major cities, and we're staying in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains in a place called Plasherville. Our total mileage for the trip stood at 3,146 miles. Pretty sure you can't see me. It's 10 o'clock at night. We're in Plasherville, California. 
long day. So the last 90 miles took us four hours. Thank you. Traffic of San Francisco is fantastic. So stop and go on the bridge we crossed the bay and was just bleh. But hey, we're here tomorrow, Eureka, Nevada. The following morning, it's on to Route 50 and back over the Sierra Nevada mountains. There is snow in the mountains, but fortunately, it's not snowing. We make our way into Lake Tahoe. Yeah, I know I'm in the dark, I'm in the shade. It's uh, Lake Tahoe right there. Pretty nice out today, not too bad. A couple of slick spots on the mountain, nothing too exciting. From there, it's on to the loneliest road in America. That's Route 50 in central Nevada. It was given this name by Life magazine in 1986. It originates from the remote areas which US 50 goes through with few or no signs of civilization along many of the parts of the route. The 408 mile highway crosses several large desert-like plateaus separated by numerous mountain ranges towering over the valley floors. It is one of my favorite places to drive on earth period, and today would be no exception. In Middlegate, Nevada, we stop for a quick bite to eat, and Glenn decides to explore Route 722, which is an alternate to Route 50. I give him my blessings and tell him the Maverick prefers to take the shorter path. He's off to do Shelby Daytona things. Why well, keep the Maverick at its preferred speed of 65 to 70 miles per hour? And I'm all by myself. And I really mean all by myself. So when I say I'm driving in the middle of nowhere, I absolutely mean it. I've got 55 miles yet to get to my hotel. I probably won't see another car go in this direction. That entire 55 miles. So today we're rolling out of Eureka, Nevada. It's a pretty neat town. It's up. It's like 6,400 feet of elevation. We're in front of uh, an old opera house, and I'll put some static pictures up, as well as the courthouse. Both these buildings date back into the mid-1800s, so pretty neat town, real small town. Next is Ely. Once again, we find ourselves on Route 50, heading into Ely, Nevada. Ely, Nevada. Our destination for the evening is Salt Lake City. We wanted to press further east, but there was snow in the forecast for parts of Wyoming that day, and we figured we could knock out all the state the following day, plus a part of Nebraska. We drive up Route 93 into Wendover and make a right onto Route 80. This time, we both make a stop at the world-famous Bonneville Salt Flats. Sadly, the Salt Flats are flooded, so my attempt at a new land speed record in the Maverick will have to wait for another day. We get up to highway speeds on 80, and my swap front tire are now severely out of round and speeds over 70 miles per hour cause severe wheel shake. We pull into a rest stop about 50 miles west of Salt Lake and swap the tires front to back and this clears up the issue for the time being. We roll into Salt Lake around 6 p.m. and I begin to scout out possible tire shops along tomorrow's route. Our total mileage for the trip so far stands at 3,825 miles driven. We awaken early in Salt Lake City and hit the road in order to beat city traffic. The Utah State Police have Route 80 closed and diverted to an off-ramp and back due to icing under an overpass. I have no footage of this because it was too dark. I connect with a tire dealer in Laramie who says they can get the car on the alignment rack and they have a pair of 205 7514s in stock if I would like them. After a yes, please, very much so response, I give them a time when we should be able to arrive. We grind out 397 miles with no real issues and pull into Les Schwab Tire Center. Remember the starter issue from the Golden Gate Bridge? Oh, starter not now. There happens to be a Napa across the street from Les Schwab, and that store just so happens to have the correct starter for the Maverick, so I picked that up. Since the issue at the bridge, I've been starting the car in the morning and mostly leaving it idle all day, knowing that the next time I start it could be that starter's last time. The guys at Les Schwab find the alignment, as suspected, is, well, not great. The camber and tow are both way out of spec, and they work to square that away, and I pick up two Venzia tires for the front and have the still decent raised white letters once again placed on the rear of the car. I now have a starter with me, and the front end is no longer chewing through tires. All we need to do is roll into Sydney, Nebraska for the evening, and that should be the last of dealing with elevation and snow. But Wyoming decides to give us a parting gift. Well, this has been going on for about 20 minutes. There's a word for spring in the Rocky Mountains. That word is called 
winter. We roll into Sydney, Nebraska as the sun is going down with a total of 4,422 miles traveled and I have a date with a defective starter that evening underneath the Maverick. You know, if you haven't replaced the starter in a Fairfield in parking lot when it's 26 degrees out at night, you really haven't lived. <laughs> Thank God for my Adelphi headlamp that I brought along. That lit the way for me. It's a pretty simple replacement, but it's a lot easier on the lift as opposed to underneath the jack without any jack stands. And I had a piece of wood in case the jack failed. Not really, don't, don't do that. We planned a 750 mile day all the way to Jacksonville, Illinois. The Maverick was better than ever. 75 miles an hour plus was the norm through Nebraska and a small part of Iowa. Then once we get into Missouri, this happens. Well, the power steering pump has failed. The bearing's going out in it. So I did what anybody would do. I pulled the belt and I'm moving on. So of course it's a special order part. No one can get it. So it's manual steering for the next uh, 900 miles, something like that. Uh, 750 miles in a Maverick. It's probably about 250 too many. So we are 40 miles out from our property. My head is banging. My eyes hurt. But we're getting there. So we put miles behind us. Going to put us in Jacksonville, Illinois. And yeah, I can't do this again tomorrow. There's just no way. It just can't happen. So that'd be time to get the car prep for the day. And it can survive easily three to four hundred mile trips. But these 750, almost 800 miles today, it's too much. It's just too much. The following morning, Glenn and I decide we should not have a destination that evening. We should drive east until we get tired and then stop. Just west of Columbus, Ohio, some wicked storm clouds to our east told us it was time to shut it down. We spend the night in Springfield, Ohio. We've now covered 5,585 miles in 12 days. Well, today should be the final day of our adventure. It's been a long trip. Any problems with your car? Any problems? Uh, broke a muffler hanger, but aside from that, the thing's been perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Any problems with the Maverick, Glenn? Uh, well, almost every day. day daily, daily, every day. Daily. Every, day. <laughs> every, day. every day I'm under the, <laughs> under the hood, under the car. So I got a lot of things I got to take care of when we get back. Somehow, the last day was a breeze. Perhaps it was because I was closer to home and had several friends in the area that I could reach out to if I needed help. Fortunately, that help wasn't required. For the first time during the trip, the Maverick and the weather were great, almost perfect. And it stayed that way all the way to my exit off the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Glenn and I had parted ways just prior to that exit. I wanted to top off my tank and he didn't have the need. I need to give a huge thank you to Glenn for always being behind me in the Maverick. He consistently offered to lend a hand wrenching on the car every time I would refuse him. I felt it was my idea to bring this car and I was the one that needed to make sure it was ready for the next day. If you happen to see Glenn out and about in his Daytona, ask him about his coupe. He'll be more than happy to tell you all about it. It's day 13, and 6,270 miles later, I'm pulling off the turnpike, and I'm gonna be about 15 miles from my house. I'm gonna make it. Fords are tough. This little 256 cylinder has been put through more than what it should have been. This is supposed to be an economy car. Get you around town, not drive you across the country. And it's done just that. It's uh, incredible. So not too bad, Maverick. Good job. It's two weeks later, I'm home, and the Maverick got me here. In all fairness to this car, some of the issues I had were my problem. The cat I thought about removing before I left because it was somewhat problematic, and that exhaust fix wasn't a great fix. That's been welded up. The power steering pump, that was original to the car, and 46 years is a long time for anyone to continue to work that's been replaced. As far as the alignment, that's something I should have had checked. And when I finally did get it squared away, the car steered great. There was no issues there. Also, I did a couple of oil changes along the way, but this car runs on dinosaur oil. That's something that you want to change every 3,000 miles in the older cars. 
so that needed to happen. Overall, it was a good trip. Once again, thanks to Glenn for accompanying me. And now the trip's over, my time with this car is also over. If you'd like to own this car, I can tell you it gets tons and tons of thumbs up and people blowing the horn. It will get you wherever you have to go, maybe not as quickly as some of you would like. I appreciate you watching this video series. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up so other people see it. Also, please consider subscribing. I'm going to put a link to our first video over here in case you missed that. And until next time, we'll see you.